Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Australia have just beaten Wales over in Sydney, 25 points to 16. They've got their revenge from the World Cup. But a very interesting game and a game where both coaches, I think, will be a little weird to be happy with what they saw. They'll see lots of areas where they can improve, but um, very excitingly, I think, either set of fans will have watched that game and at times gone, there's actually reason uh, to have hope. We're talking about the Sleeping Giants of rugby in, I think, Wales and Australia. I think Wales, you know, are going through a, a, a dismal period from an administration point of view and haven't really built on the success of the years they had. The last decade, they were really competitive um, and uh, been one of the better sides in the world. Australia, former World Cup winners, for example, in probably their worst um, condition ever in terms of Australian rugby. But I think the nice thing is two teams with not a lot of experience, but you're looking at some individual players and there's reason to be excited. Um, so I think that, you know, Joe Schmidt, the area begins with a win and he'll be very happy. But I think Warren Gatton will look at that performance and be disappointed because it very much could have gone the other way. You know, I think Wales would have been deserved winners had they gotten over the line. Before we look at the, the game, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, an early points for Wales and an early penalty as Ben Thomas um, got his first test points in the second minute. No, Lulesio, however, cancelled that out with two penalties in the sixth and the 14th minute. He also missed one in between there. So, um, uh, got away with one in every Wales, but uh, their ill-discipline was really, really um, costing them early in the early stages. And they actually lost a player to the bin in the form of uh, Gareth Thomas um, and uh, Tupo went over and uh, they scored the first try, which Lulesio then... Um, out of the extras in 21st minute. So they opened up a 13 points to three lead with a uh, man in the bin as well. However, that was then nullified with a penalty try. Wales getting right back into it and uh, responding, scoring a try of their own uh, penalty try as well. To make it 13 points to 10, Fraser McWright going to the bin after that, um, that uh, try. And then we've got uh, at halftime, 13 points to 10. And you, I think both coaches would have sat there going, mm, you know, this this game's in the balance. I think Warren Gatlin probably would have been the happier of the two sides. I really felt that Wales had the momentum going into halftime, um, but needed to needed to sort of turn that into points. And I think that was kind of the, the, the story of the game. They had tries disallowed, for example, throughout the match. Um, they had really good opportunities and uh, they just couldn't really get over the line. Um, but they got the first points on the second half via the boot of Ben Thomas before a good try um, from... Uh, Filippo Dagono on the right hand side there, good physicality, and uh, Mason Gray not able to uh, stop him as he went over. Um, Lalesio get missing the points there before Ben Thomas then got them back within two points, 18 points to six in the 65th minute, um, and then a great try. So good to see um, Tom Wright back in the in 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 the Australian jersey, and a great try for him as he went over in the corner, and no mistake from the legendary son um, of Michael Lineker, Tom Lineker, getting his debut and getting his first test points as well in the 69th minute. Wales continued to push, but I just couldn't quite find, um, you know, the edge that they needed. And, yeah, final, uh, finally going down by nine points. Let's look at some of the stats, shall we, and see sort of where some of the, the game was won and lost. Uh, if we look at uh, the uh, possession stuff like that, it, it tells an interesting state, uh, tale. But, uh, so basically, yeah, two penalty goals to three. Uh, three tries to one. So Wales, not as I mentioned, you know, it was not being able to draw the tries, I think, which is really um, what affected them. In terms of territory, 50-50, pretty even. Um, mostly played in between the two 22s. Um, possession was 47% for Wales, 57% for Australia. Wales had a very good spot of possession right towards the end. They basically had all the ball in the last 10 minutes. So it was an impressive defensive performance um, towards the end by Australia. If we look at the set plays, for example, 93% a lot for Australia, 76% for Wales, something they'll need to work on. Same with the scrum, 67%. Uh, the Australia scrum won a couple of scrum penalties. So that's why I think there's an interesting part is that Wales looked good with ball in hand, but struggled a little bit, set piece. Um, if we then look at the attack, uh, pretty similar to be honest, 130 carries to 100. 304 post contact means by Australia was impressive compared to 191 from Wales. Three line breaks to one. And we look at the turnovers, one, Australia much better at the breakdown. Um, with uh, six turnovers won, but uh, discipline-wise from both teams, not great. 11 penalties conceded by Wales, most of that are in the first half. They cleaned up the active bit in the second half. 13 penalties conceded by Australia, a card apiece. If you look at defences, for example, both um, teams are getting around that 90% mark. 
Um, to kick some hand straight. It kicks slightly more than Wales, but but not by much. Uh, in terms of some sort of key players, Rob Bellatini was full of carrying as as sort of always. Um, Josh Hathaway with eleven carries as well. Aaron Wainwright with nine carries. If you look at line breaks, for example, um, Wright, Killaway, Dagener, um, Liam Williams all getting a line break. On the attack, I look at meters carried. Tom Wright with the most with eighty four. Aaron Wainwright with seventy five. Uh, if you look at defenders beaten, Aaron Wainwright five. You know uh, Tom Wright four as well. So. Those two players very much uh, the, the threat with ball in hand. Uh, from a defensive point of view, impressive uh, defensive efforts from a couple of players. Archie Griffin with 27 uh, tackles. Cross Junger with 22. Daft Jenkins with 22. Tommy Rafal with 22. Dewey Lake with 18. Aaron Wayne White with 17. Warren Gatlin teams defend well. They really do, generally. So to have conceded three tries will disappoint him. But you can see why um, his, 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 his teams generally have a decent defensive record because he creates a system where players can and do make plenty of tackles. What did you think of the game? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.